Were you both Star Trek fans prior to the movie? Uh, yeah, I uh, I have what I would describe as a, a long-standing deep appreciation for the show. I watched it as a oh, boy. Oh, come on. I you do. were obsessed. I, I never dressed up. <laughs> I never dressed up until now. I'm not getting paid to do it. Uh, Zoe? Uh, no, no. I, I was aware of the series, but but um, it was more my mother would watch it when she was a child, and another who was one of her favorite characters of all time. But I was I was more of the Star Wars generation. Closet fan. <laughs> I'm out. She's. I know. I'm still yeah. in denial. Yeah, she's still in denial. Tell me, how do you prepare for this role? Was it a little scary stepping into these roles that are so well known and so, the characters so well loved? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think potentially you could let yourself get crippled by that for fear of the responsibility but the wonderful wonderful thing about JJ is that he created this environment that was not a high pressure environment it yeah. was it was fun it was relaxed yet it was also highly focused and and really efficient and we, we just had the most fun concentrating on on playing these on these characters and and having fun and i think that that chemistry really translates into onto the on screen yeah it was also like given the circumstances too, it, it, and and I, I do know that whenever JJ would hear us having conversations about the series or or, or, or um, certain episodes and things like that, he would always be there to sort of take the pressure off. It, there was a lot of pressure in the beginning because yeah, I, I personally have never done that where I've been hired to to play something to play a character that's been done before and it has been alive for forty some one years and was so iconic and and I didn't know if I was ready for that so early on in my career to f take the consequences gracefully and not blame JJ. <laughs> <laughs> How do you prepare? Did you have to go back and watch the series and watch all the other movies? I mean, what? Well, I actually um, had recently watched the, uh, the, the entire DVD collection with my son. That was two years prior to finding out that they were making this film. So uh, I felt that I, I, I knew the characters and I knew the, the dynamics and the archetypes. So I didn't have to necessarily go back and, 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 and study. See everything, yeah. Yeah. I, I chose not to. I, I was afraid of, um, as actors, we're prone to imitation, and um, and I knew that I wasn't hired to, to, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it, that wasn't what JJ was looking for, for me to sort of have an interpretation of Nichelle's interpretation of Uhura, because it would, it, I would have been completely neglecting the character. Is this the sexiest Star Trek yet? I think it is. You know what? I think <laughs> the wonderful thing about what JJ's done is he's managed to really capture the very essence I think of what Gene Roddenberry created back in the mid 60s yeah. you know it's this sexy fun adventure show that uh, uh, is, 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 is hip and, and energized and, and that's what this film is it is action packed energized young and it just ha captures that very spirit of the original will there be a sequel well, you know, we're at the point where we're, we're handing our, our film over to an audience, and if it's successful and if we find an audience that embraces it and loves it and has as much fun watching it as we had making it, then, yeah, definitely would love to come back. Yeah. And if it became a franchise, would you come back for the other movies? I mean, 40 years down the line, we've already prepared to, like, getting to know each other and going, you're going to the Detroit convention? <laughs> I'm going too! <laughs> yeah, I'm all game for that.